Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to participate in um, Tim Talks Talkies Top 25 uh, Movies of the 80s to me. Um, so I want to thank Tim for throwing out this challenge for everybody. And uh, just dive right on in. But first I got five um, honorable mentions uh, that just mean a lot to me over the since I grew up in the late 80s and 90s. I watched all these films growing up, so... First one here is not a great film, but it just takes back memories of me going to the video stores in the late 80s and early 90s. And I saw this on VHS, the first film. This is a double feature, but I'm talking about the first film here. Uh, really intrigued me. I remember renting it. I thought it was okay at the time, but, you know, I was really young at the time. I'm talking about Troll 1 from 1986. Like I said, not a great film, but the thing is, the weird thing is that one of the characters in the in this film is uh, Harry Potter, so I found that really strange. But uh, Troll actually had um, uh, Julie Lewis Dreyfus in it from Seinfeld and uh, Veep, so pretty cool. Now, like I said, not a great film, but it's better than the second one. Uh, so that's number 30. So this is number 29. Uh, again, not a great film. It is in the Marvel Universe. That is Howard the Duck from 1986 as well. Um, a lot going on in this film that probably wouldn't fly today, obviously. But anyway, I remember enjoying this as a kid. Uh, I never upgraded to the 4K, but I might over maybe in the next couple of months. So we got Howard the Duck. Number 28, um, a lot of people love this film. I, I personally enjoy it myself. It's not in my top 25, but we have Clue from 1985. Uh, Tim Curry is great in this. So is uh, Madeline Kahn, uh, Christopher Lloyd, Martin Ball. So if you guys haven't seen Clue, which I'm sure you have, so pretty, pretty cool. Um, are we getting a 4K? I don't know. Maybe. So that was number 27 here. Again, not a great film. <laughs> but I personally enjoyed it growing up. I rewatched it maybe last year. I still thought it was pretty cheesy. Obviously, it's an E.T. ripoff. And that is uh, Mac and Me from 1988. Um... I love the whole burst out and song and dance in the McDonald's back in the day. So it's really strange. But if you guys like Mac and Me, please let me know. And then the last honorable mention I just rewatched the other night again. Really bad movie, but it's really nostalgic to me. That is The Garbage Pill Kids, 1987. Um... They could have gone a lot more, they had, should have had more characters, but I know they had, what they had to work with, you know, based on the uh, collectible card series. Um, I actually have a few in my collection as well, so pretty cool. All right, so let's get into the top 25, guys. Um, you probably know one of them's coming up by the, the hat I'm wearing, but I won't, we'll get, we'll get there when we get there. So my 20, um, number 25 on my list, I haven't even opened this uh, Criterion, but I have seen the movie many times. I've had the DVD in my collection. I've had the regular Blu-ray in my collection. And then we got the Princess Bride classic fantasy um, movie here, directed by Rob Reiner, of course. Um, I just love this film. Like, you know, Carrie Elwes, Chris Sarandon, uh, Wallace, uh, Wallace Shawn and Andre the Giant um, really, really worked well together. <laughs> Inconceivable. I don't think you know what that means. Does it, would you like a peanut? <laughs> Love that film. Uh, number 24. We got The Lost Boys from 1987. Classic film. Vampire film. One of, one of the best in my opinion. Okay, number 23, trying to keep track here, guys. 23, um, this is a great film. Um, I haven't really seen it on many people's lists. 
Uh, I remember watching this uh, uh, probably when I was, I don't know, seven, eight. Uh, Richard Pryor's in this film. So is John Candy. And this is uh, Brewster's Millions. Um, it's based on an older film. It, it is actually on this 1945 film, which is a special feature on this Blu-ray from uh, Shock Factory. Uh, basically, uh, he inherits his... Uh, I think it's it's it's, his, uh, it's just a distant distant relative. He's supposed to spend thirty million dollars in thirty days to get uh, an inheritance of three three hundred million dollars, and what he has to go through um, to get there. This is a uh, Walter Hill film, so if you guys like Walter Hill, I definitely recommend you guys check this out. Number twenty three. I mean, this this has been on quite a few people's lists. Um, you always remember the ending in this film. You're like, oh my god. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Sleepaway Camp, you know. Puss Rose. I met her a couple, like, was it two years ago at a convention. Really sweet lady. Um, yeah. You guys haven't seen Sleepaway Camp, highly recommend it. Where are we at? 21. Yeah, 21. Um, this is a really cool, like, family horror film, in my opinion. Uh, we got the Monster Squad. Uh, it's kind of got that universal monster thing going for it, but it's not. But it, but obviously it's not. Um, of course, you got, you know, Wolfman, Dracula, um, Mummy, and the Creature. But they all have different names, obviously. Um these kids are just trying to save uh save the world before midnight because <laughs> the the dracula is looking for the amulet and you know they they don't want him to have it so he'll destroy the world really cool movie by fred decker number 20 this has been on a lot of people's lists too we got uh peewee's big adventure from 1985 Really cool Tim Burton film. Obviously, everyone knows who Pee Wee Herman is. Um, it's just he, someone steals his bike and he's on his way to go find it. And in his little uh, adventure along the way. So, really cool, really fun movie. Highly recommend that one. So, we got number 19. This one has not been on people's lists. So I don't understand why. If we didn't have this film, we wouldn't have Jawbreaker. We wouldn't have Mean Girls. Um, we got Heathers here from 1988 with Winona Ryder, Christian Slater, uh, really fun, dark comedy. It's about this group of, uh, group of Heather, group of, uh, girls named Heather. Well, they go by the name Heather anyway. They're the queens of the high school and everyone wants to be them. Um... Uh, Veronica wanted to be them until she found out who they really were. And then, yeah, pretty cool comedy there. Uh, number 18. I've seen this on people's lists. Um, like you should put it on your list. This is a really creepy movie. Especially for being rated PG at the time. Uh, we got Poltergeist here on 4K. Uh, basically... They move in. They're they're in this house, and apparently it's it's been built on a on a burial ground, and it's haunted, and everything they have to go through. Um, this house is clean. Uh, let's see, number seventeen. Um, probably should be higher on my list because I love this film, but I put it in here just the way I did. Um, you got Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Yes, I know Stephen King didn't like this uh, rendition of it. He likes the miniseries version, but that one goes verbatim to the book. This one does not. So, pretty cool. I like the steel book too. It's just the, you know, the labyrinth of, you know, I'll work and no play and make Shaq a dull boy. Uh, number 16 is a movie that actually is actually kind of new to my list. I watched it recently. Fell in love with it. It's got a great cast, too. Um, from 1987, this is <clears throat> River's Edge. 
Crispin Glover, Keanu Reeves, Dennis Hopper. You know, what can you, what, what's there not to love about this film? Uh, it's based on a real life murder of a young California girl. And it's just what her friends go through and everything. Um, and, you know, someone, someone is the killer and, you know, what they go through as well. So pretty cool film. This is actually out of print now, but you can still find the DVD out, out there. All right, number 15. This was a hard one for me because I love this series as a whole. Um, the first one's great, but I'm going to go with the third film. This is Nightmare on Elm Street. I'm going to go with the Dream Warriors. Um, it's, it's, I know all the discs look exactly the same on here, but... Uh, what's there not to love about the Dream Warriors? It's like a, you know... You know, first this franchise started off as, you know, just straight up horror, and then it added comedy to it. But, you know, the group, these group of kids try to beat Freddy, and a lot of them actually survive. But then, you know, if you, if you guys have seen the, the, the rest of the franchise, you know, you know what happens in part four. But part three is, I hold dear to my heart. Uh, number 14 my favorite John Candy film of all time. You know, not a lot of people don't have this on their lists. But, you know, I gotta go with, with this film from 1985, and that is Summer Rental. Does not have a, a Blu-ray release in, this, in the U.S. Um, got this from uh, a company that shall not be named. But I actually like the scan of this film, too. We actually get an interview on here with John Candy talking about uh, Armed and Dangerous, and then he also talks about this film as well. Thirteen. Um, again, one of the best comedies ever made by Mel Brooks, in my opinion. Talking about Spaceballs. <laughs> uh, highly quotable film. Uh, I actually watched it on, it was on TV the other day. I just caught some of it. I was just, you know, still laughing. It's still, still, um, still funny to me. Yes, you have John Candy in here as well, but, you know, it's just the... It's just, you know, making fun of Star Wars and all that. Um, especially the, the, there's the one scene with uh, Daphne Zanego when they're shooting at her and they shoot her hair. And then she becomes Rambo. It just kills everybody. Uh, single shot every time. Doesn't miss at all. <laughs> Love it. Number 12. Probably my favorite zombie film of all time. Uh, Return of the Living Dead from 1985. Um, we just had the uh, infamous day, uh, July 3rd, 1984. You guys know what I'm talking about if you've seen this. Really good comedy horror, for sure. Number 11 on my list is one of the best horror anthologies ever made. Stephen King Romero matchup. With a little Tom Savini added. We got Creep Show. Nothing else to say about it. Classic. Alright, my top 10 is pretty much everything that everyone that's been on everyone's lists here or there. Um I go with Ghostbusters, the first one. Second one is okay in my opinion, but the first one is just the best. Number nine, Beetlejuice. Um, you guys excited for Beetlejuice 2? I am. It's not going to be as good as this one, obviously, but still excited for it. Number eight, got to go with one that I my uncle introduced me to because he had the VHS at home back in the day. We got uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I mean, Dodge of Doom used to scare the hell out of me as a kid. I'm sure a lot of people were afraid of him, too. There's the back. I know the, I know the J card's pretty loose there. So you get um, Jessica Rabbit and Eddie. Number seven. 
I haven't, I've seen this on people's lists, but not as high as I have it ranked. Um, this is the one that started it all for me, for my, um, appreciation and love for the Friday the 13th series. Obviously, they gotta go with the original. The second one is, is great too, um, but I gotta go with the original. Because if this didn't exist, the whole franchise wouldn't exist. I know, they weren't, they originally weren't going to put the scene in there where he jumps out of the water. Um, but yeah. Friday the 13th. Uh, so number six. Gotta go with E.T., man. Classic film. I have this on VHS as well in my collection. Um, brings back memories of my childhood. It's a really sad film too, if you think about it. The ending, it's kind of a tearjerker. All right guys, top five. We got the top five now. Number five is another film based on a Stephen King short story. It's a coming of age film. It's got a really good cast in here too. Gotta go with Stand By Me, classic film. Kids go on a little adventure in the woods to, to go see a dead body and everything they have to deal with along the way. Number four, you probably can tell by the hat I'm wearing. Um, well, the, the hat I'm wearing is from part two, but I'm gonna go with the original. So we got Back to the Future. Um, yeah. Back to the Future Part 1. Now, the only reason why I didn't upgrade to 4K is because this set actually has not only the three movies, it actually has the entire um, cartoon series on here too. So that's why I have this version. Alright guys, top three. Can you guess which ones they are? I'm sure you guys know. Number three has got to be Gremlins. You know, grew up with this too. It's very nostalgic to me. Um, who doesn't love how cute um, Gizmo is and his little his little car? And then of course um, I've actually met um, Zach Galligan before. He's a really cool guy. Um, met him a couple times over the years at certain conventions. Number two was going to be number one, but. There's another one that was actually also close to my heart and growing up. So these last two are probably my favorite films of all time, especially from the 80s. Uh, got Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Um, I remember watching this on TV back around like 1990, 89, something like that. Um, like I woke up one one um, one night and I was I wasn't I wasn't tired or something, and I turned this on. Yeah. Pretty awesome stuff, you know. We're still waiting. We're still waiting for the part two or TV series or whatever the heck's going on with this. Um, I was able to meet all the brothers, and I met Grant and Suzanne as well. Pretty cool people. Definitely will remember that for the rest of my life. And then number one, I've seen this on people's lists before, um, especially high ranked. Which doesn't surprise me at all because, you know, this is a very nostalgic movie. Not just to me, but to everybody that I know. Uh, we got The Goonies as my number one pick. You know, can't beat it. Kids go on. Kids trying to save their, uh, trying to save their um, neighborhood because they want to turn it into a golf course. And they're trying to find gold. When I release gold to save their families from having to move away and what they have to go through. Uh, you have to hide from the Fratelli's family. And yeah, so that is my uh, top 25 for the 80s. Um, obviously, I know there's a lot of films out there that I could put on the list, which are great too. Like, uh, you know, Breakfast Club, Pretty in Pink. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I remember watching all those films and enjoying them, but these are my picks. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and I will catch you guys in the next couple days. Hey, thanks again, Tim, for, for this challenge. See you later, guys.